Hey everyone, I'm Steph McGovern and uh, I'm a journalist here. I work on programmes like BBC Breakfast, Shot Well for Less on BBC One and also Watchdog 2, which is filmed here in Media City in Salford. So basically, I have two jobs here in the BBC. One is as a presenter where you'll see me on telly delivering the news to you or talking about whatever it is that's going on in the world on different shows. And the other job is as a journalist. So that is where I am trying to hunt out and find stories and guests which can help me to explain the news to everybody who's watching. So to make things much simpler and uh, easier to understand. I do that job with a team of producers. So they're people who will do a lot of hard work into helping me uh, find guests and find stories and basically unearth the information that will help us to explain things to you. Now, some of the first places we will look for stories are on websites, on social media and in newspapers too. So basically, you will always see me on my phone. I might not just be chatting to my friends. I'm looking for stories and things too. I have to think about the types of stories that would work well on the programmes I'm on because different programmes have different types of audiences. Then we'll make sure that we've got all of the facts right before we take it to the editor of the programme, the big boss, to see what they think about the idea. Now, I also look at different news and business websites because you need to know what your competitors are doing uh, and other media organisations around the world because, of course, they're reporting on all the news too. Now, social media, I'm sure you're not surprised to hear, is a great place to look for guests and stories. So when people are tweeting or putting Facebook messages out there, I will be able to see um, from that what they think about something. And then I might think, oh, they would be a good guest to talk about it. Now, I follow lots of journalists and organisations on Twitter and Facebook. And uh, also lots of, well, what we call normal people. So just people who are watching TV at home and commenting on things. They might be uh, a person who's been a witness to something that's happened. And we will try and uh, seek them out and talk to them too, to see uh, what's trending in and what can give us great ideas. It's really important when you do a job like mine to always be a journalist. Basically, it means being nosy, keeping your eyes and ears open all the time. So you might overhear something on the bus or in the supermarket checkout and think, hang on, that sounds interesting. There's something in that. Or it could be, you know, on your way to or from school or work. And that's how we get lots of ideas. If we want to run a story, we have to make sure our facts are correct. So we can't just put something on telly because someone's told us so and so and so, you know, some rumour. It has to be from the original source or with the people involved. So we'd never run something we don't know is true and neither should you. The whole breakfast team are always on the lookout for interesting and original stories. And then we have to find the guests to come in and talk about it and sometimes as well we'll go to the locations where the story is so often I'll be out and about often in different businesses around the country and as journalists we do a lot of research so that I know what I'm talking about on air for example if I'm interviewing a business owner, I need to make sure I know everything about that business. Or an actor who's just been in, I need to watch the film that they're in, which is a good part of the job. Uh, but my top research tip is find a different angle. The audience doesn't want to hear the same story again and again. Tell them something new that they didn't know. That's where the word news comes from. It's new and they haven't heard the story before. Or tell the story in a different way. So to sum it up, always check your facts, including your numbers and statistics. Don't take it for granted that what you've read on Twitter or wherever else online is true. Remember, you can find stories anywhere. It might be from just having a chat with your mum and dad at home. The internet and newspapers are good, but don't forget to talk to people and listen to what's going on around you. So you found out how we find stories for BBC News. Now it's your turn. Go and have a go at it. It's fun, honest.